What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the aerodynamics of wheelhouses. We'll be going through what are wheelhouses, then the aerodynamics of them, and then how to reduce the drag with the geometry. So wheelhouses, as you probably know, are the areas that the wheels and tires are kept in on a car. So we have four of them obviously around a car, and often they will be depicted as being fairly rectangular, but in modern times they are actually not very rectangular, they are quite circular, or quite um, spherical almost. Not only just in this view, but in also the top view as well. And we'll get into the reason why in a second. But one reason why, just from a geometrical point of view, that this is rounded like this and not like really cut very close, is because the tire itself, the wheel has to be able to rotate. So particularly the front wheels, they have to be able to rotate around as we drive around. So if we make this wheelhouse very restrictive, when we try to rotate the, the car, the, the wheels, it's going to hit the wheelhouse I mean, be able to turn properly. So we have to make the wheelhouse a certain geometry it needs to be at least big enough to be able to accommodate not just the circumference of the wheel, but also the rotation of it through its operation cycle. So what are the aerodynamics of a wheelhouse? So the aerodynamics of a wheelhouse are quite um, complicated and quite messier. Like there's nothing really streamlined about a wheelhouse. And it also gets more complicated when you factor in the cooling drag. So we also looked at cooling flows in one of our other automotive aerodynamics uh, videos. And we'll touch on that briefly here again. So what happens is typically we have flow, let's say we have the flow coming in this way and flow this way. We have the flow coming up from the underbody perhaps, and then it will just shoot in and just go all haywire around here and maybe even go backwards and then come back out somewhere. There's really no predefined path that it will follow. Every car is kind of different and it's definitely not streamlined. So a general rule of thumb when it comes to aerodynamics is whenever you have flow moving around in a fairly chaotic manner and it's not streamlined, that's gonna increase the drag. So that's not a good thing. So what we want to do is somehow either make this flow more streamlined or reduce the volume that is the flow can go into. And this is actually brings us to our first general rule as to how to make a wheelhouse. And if you were to follow just this rule and no other rule, you'll probably make your wheelhouses about 80% more or less draggy than what they could be. And then the extra 10 or 20% that you might get from the details, you may not get from just this general rule, but you'll get the vast majority of the benefits. And this rule is, you want to reduce this volume as much as possible. So again, as I mentioned, the volume has to be a certain amount and a certain size for this wheel to be able to articulate in here. But you shouldn't really have it any bigger. So if we were to have a square, wheelhouse, for example, we now have this volume here that is useless. We don't need it for the wheel to be able to operate. And all it is is just additional volume for the air to come in and circle around and then just take up uh, more drag, like it just produces more drag. So if we make the wheelhouse as small as possible, but no smaller because then it's gonna hit the wheel, the better. The second thing we can do is we have the wheel, we can increase the tire size. So you know how you have, um, for example, with the rims to begin with, you can have the rims which are bigger. The bigger the rims are, the more the wheel is gonna pop out usually because you have bigger tires on there as well. You can even have thicker tires to make it, which will also be more comfortable in terms of the ride, but it'll also take up more of this volume around here. And that will reduce the volume that is just free for the air to go in. So if you just follow that general rule, which is to make the wheel housing volume, make it as small as possible, I should probably put vol here, then you'll get 80% of the benefits of just aerodynamic design. Let's move on to the details now. So we also have, I should mention before we go, we also have other things in here that take up some of the packing, for example, the disc brake and maybe the caliper. And that is good because that takes up some of this volume in this wheelhouse, which reduces the drag as well. And when I talk about reducing drag, we're looking at about five to 15 counts, generally speaking, is what we can get by um, designing the wheelhouse effectively. And this equates to about five, or maybe let's say 2% to 6% of a regular car's aerodynamic drag. So we can reduce it by about 6% of a regular car's drag. So look, what are some details? Now, if you were to look at any car on the road these days, even cheaper cars, you'll notice that particularly on the front, just before the wheel, you have this little thing coming down, this little block. And let's, let me draw just the um, outline here. So this blob coming down, this is called a front wheel spoiler. What this does is the flow hits it and then it gets redirected. And we design these front wheel spoilers in particular based on how we want the flow to go around the tire and the wheel, 
the reason why we have these spoilers is because the flow that comes in usually, if we, the spoiler wasn't here, we just keep coming along and hit the front of this tire. Now, whenever you have flow hitting at the front of an object, the pressure will increase. And that's because we get a stagnation pressure. And that means that we get a lot more drag from this. So by redirecting the flow a little bit, then we can redirect this flow from hitting the tire and reducing the drag of the wheel and the vehicle in general. Obviously we do get an increase in the drag because of this spoiler, that's only a local increase. And the slight increase we get here from this stagnation point here is much lower than the overall drag that we save from the wheel itself. Now we also see these wheel spoilers sometimes on rear wheels. So just in front of a rear wheel, we might have just this little thing popping down here as well. That's not as common as the front wheel spoiler. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, the benefits that you can derive from this rear wheel spoiler is not, not as great. And two, the often the flow that's coming to hit the rear wheel is not as well defined, it's not as streamlined. So the front wheel, we have the flow coming in and it's usually very streamlined. It's coming like directly and we know where it's coming from. The rear wheel, the flow has, is coming from the front wheel plus all the underbody stuff and even the cooling flow, which may just like pull it out in a different direction. So trying to figure out where the flow is coming and how to make a wheel spoiler to benefit the rear wheel is a difficulty. Now I mentioned the cooling drag or the cooling flow. How does that factor into this? And this is another point which potentially can make the drag of a of a, a wheelhouse even worse. And some cars actually dump some of or all of the cooling flow into the wheelhouse. So it goes through the vehicle, through the engine bay, and etc. And the radiator, then it comes out and pops into the wheelhouse. So we have even more flow now that's coming in here. Now that's not necessarily such a bad thing compared to having fresh flow coming in, because this is now some flow that is already slow moving flow coming in. And we are obviously reducing the energy of it when it comes into the wheelhouse because it's hitting around, bouncing around, creating a little high pressure on the back here, low pressure on the front perhaps. And that is increasing the drag but it's better than having a much faster moving flow coming in and doing the same thing because we'll get more drag from that fast moving flow potentially, or usually. So that's the cooling flow. And a final thing that I wanna talk about is the back of a wheel. So if you were to think about the wheelhouse, I mentioned before that we want to make the wheelhouse as small as possible effectively, but no smaller. We want it to be able to do its job by housing the wheel and letting the wheel rotate around freely but we don't want it to be very big. So one idea you might have is, well, why don't we then cut off the back here? If we were to have, let's say, even here, let's say the, the wheel housing comes down like this, we now have all this volume here that we've kind of shed because now it's kind of like free flow that the air can come in. Well, that's not necessarily a great thing for a couple of reasons. One, that doesn't always work out that way because you might just have more flow coming in and bouncing around here, increasing the volume of the wheelhouse effectively and increasing the drag. Two, we have at the back of the wheel, a low pressure. That's because we have the flow that's coming around. It will separate and then we get a wake here and then the flow jetting around this bottom of the wheel, which we haven't covered yet. And that also creates a low pressure on the back. So this low pressure region on the back of a wheel. How to get rid of that is often by making the wheelhouse sucked in, coming closer to actually, and down to actually um, cover the back of this wheel so we don't have now all this free stream flow getting sucked into this low pressure region and increasing the drag. By having the wheel housing coming down, we kind of shield the back of the wheel. That also alleviates some of that um, low pressure zone that will um, increase the drag by sucking more flow in. So we actually do want to reduce uh, we also want to um, reduce the height of this wheelhouse at the back from the ground to be able to kind of shield the wheel even more. The more we can shield the wheel, the better off we'll be. So that's one caveat that we should be aware of when we're talking about how to reduce the volume of the wheelhouse. As I mentioned, 80% of the time, like that's going to like that's going to give you 80% of the benefit. But there are some nuances where we want to change the wheelhouse to take into account some of these things. So that's the wheelhouse aerodynamics of a car. Let's briefly recap what we went through. So the wheelhouse is that area, that volume that houses the wheel, as you'd expect. And the more we can cover the wheel, generally speaking, the lower the drag will be. Also, we want the wheelhouse to be as small as possible, but still allow the wheel to articulate as we want it to articulate. The reason why is because the more empty volume we have, the more the flow can just come in, 
bounce around, go back and forward, increase the pressure on the back, reduce the pressure on the front, and that's no good for drag. Another thing we can do is, well, in addition to reducing the wheelhouse size, we can also increase the rim size and all the tire size to take up more of this wheelhouse volume. Now, obviously that gets to a point where we can't go any bigger, otherwise we can't rotate the wheel around as much, but there's a limit to that. Another thing we can do is put on spoilers in front of the wheels. Typically the front wheel spoiler is very common. The rear wheel spoilers do occur sometimes, but not always. And the, 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 um, the function of these spoilers is to redirect the flow away from the wheel and make it move around it so we don't have all this fresh, fast moving flow just crashing straight into the front and increasing the pressure on the front face, which would then increase the pressure drag of the wheel and then of the entire vehicle. So by redirecting it around the wheel, we can reduce the drag of the wheel. We can also put the rear wheel spoiler there to do a similar sort of thing. But for the rear wheels and the front wheels, typically we want the wheelhouse at the back to come down quite low to cover this low pressure zone at the back of a tire. To do that, we are shielding the tire from the fresh moving flow that's around there from potentially being sucked into the zone and then capturing even more flow in there and increasing the drag even more. So by dropping this rear of the wheelhouse down, we can reduce the drag even more. And the amount of drag that we can see, the change in the drag coefficient is around about five counts to 15 counts. Uh, I'll put it like this. This is mathematical E, uh, this should be E here. I'll put it as this mathematical uh, expression. And this works out to be about 2% to 6% of a vehicle's drag coefficient that we can drop it by with this um, benefit, with this change in the wheelhouse design. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more like this, check out a book by Joseph Cass called Automotive Aerodynamics. We have it linked in the description below. We also have courses on theory and CFD, so you can find them in the link in the description below. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.